It's the end of 2020 and I'm alone in my house and I started thinking about rivers. Where do they start? Where do they end? And what determines how they flow? Specifically, I've been looking at the Danube, tracing its way on Google Maps from Black Sea to where? In which direction does it flow? And is it connected to a large body of water at each end? Or does it have water flowing from the mountains at one end? In Germany, I find a mark on the map that says that this is the start of the Danube. But looking at the map, the river simply seems to split in two. It's just that now none of the blue lines on the map says Danube, which was the name that I used to keep track of the Danube on the map. Now the line says Brig and Briach. And as the end, no body of water and no mountains. That makes it seem like a river is just a continuous stretch of flowing water that someone decided to name a certain thing. And it's a new river when some other name takes over. At this point you might be thinking, that's not how rivers work. Or, I know how rivers work. And uh, how come this adult woman doesn't know how rivers work? Or maybe... You are a kindred spirit, and we are in sync, and we are thinking, that doesn't sound right, how does it work? And maybe you're hoping, if you listen on, you'll get the answers you seek. To understand rivers, it's important to understand the cycle of water. It was one of the first things I learned. I'm gonna gloss over a lot here, but essentially there is rain, sloping ground, gravity, and evaporation. Evaporation is the only one of those that is even slightly magic and non-obvious, in that we can't really see the water in the ocean and the ground turning into gas, and then back to liquid up in the sky before coming back down. But it does. Rain does not come from space, even though that would be cool. And if the water didn't go anywhere, pretty soon Kevin Costner would be swimming around with gills. If you get that reference, you will receive further kindred spirit points or old person vouchers, which can be redeemed for kindred spirit points. Ah, yeah. Rivers. 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 A river has a source and a mouth, and the water flows from the source in the mountains where the water falls, and then pools through streams and smaller rivers till it joins the forming river at the confluence. The area around a river where rain falls and drains into that river is called the river basin. Nearby rivers will have their own river basins and the edges between those areas are called watersheds. Danube flows from German mountains, gets reinforced by water flowing from the Alps, passing through Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova, and finally Ukraine, reaching the mouth at the Black Sea. As I mentioned in the beginning, when uh, looking at the map, I thought that Danube just split in two to the streams Breg and Briach, like it just changed names for no reason at the split. Saying it split in two was a bit mistaken since I didn't know the direction of the river. They joined the Danube is more accurate. Turns out uh, they did not continue for long, and that it's hard to say exactly where the river starts. The source at Donau Eschingen is a chosen spot where the water has been allowed to pool before it flows on, and there has been some local drama about where to put the source. Further upstream, in Furtwangen, there is also a tourist attraction claiming to be the source. Looks like Donau Eschingen made a flashier monument, though. As a side note, I also learned about meanders. Have you ever noticed how squiggly rivers can be? Those uh, squiggles are the meanders. Forces of the rivers, details not important, creates and intensifies the squiggles and finally merge and a new path is forged and the old one gets deprecated and disappears. I don't remember learning this as a kid in school and really I didn't have to because now there's YouTube. I found an online education series on YouTube for teenagers, high schoolers, I guess. It was a good basic level 
I ignored the exercises the teachers had set up though. I was already interested, so I didn't feel I needed to remember the information and I'd pick up the keywords eventually anyway. Why did I spend a whole day of my vacation learning about rivers? It felt fun, relevant, crucial information in my life, clearly. And I got this strange urge to tell everyone I know about random bits of information I've learned as well as the wonderful epic of rivers. Uh, and so I have my friend here with me, who also has some time to waste talking about rivers. Oh yeah, all the flowy stuff. And I feel uh, also you wouldn't mind talking about rivers. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I have a mind to talk about rivers and rivers. No rivers in this. Disturbing. We went traveling in Germany a couple of years back. And I remember we talked about rivers then, because we were crossing some rivers. Well, we were traveling above a river, back and forth, right? Because we went to Wuppertal and we went on the... Oh, uh, yeah, on the Wupper. Yeah, Schwebebahn. Schwebebahn, Schwebebahn above, above Wupper. And we got into talking about how rivers work at that point, but I don't think I really... Dug into it? No, no. You were surprised at that point, and this time also you were surprised. Yeah. And uh, you kind of indicated this is the kind of questions you ask when you're a child. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I think you meant it in a kind of shady way. <laughs> in a kind uh, of shady way? Yes. And I'm I'm going to take it as a good, though. Let, let's, let's say you meant it in a shady way. Shady means. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> All right. But you don't know about rivers and I don't know about shady. Yeah. Yeah. So we're good. Um, or possibly shady. I don't know. Yeah, it, but it's, it's, it's probably true that this was something that I was taught in school when I was young. Uh, and I have either forgotten that I learned uh, this or I never really took it in because I wasn't that interested. And now I feel it's so obvious how interesting it is. If I tell it to somebody, I cannot understand how they cannot find this interesting. And fascinating. <laughs> yes. this, the complex cycles of water through the atmosphere and the water cycle. A water cycle does not sound like something fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is if you're cycling on a lake. I'm thinking, like, the thing about looking at the map. First, I start wondering just about Danube, and then I'm exploring the map, and then I see, like, okay, here is the Danube going. Where does it go? It should go to the mountains, and then I try to confirm that it's like that uh, and then it just in the end I said it's split into Breg and Brigach and then I wondered why that was what what was happening there why is it just and it, it said that that was the source when obviously I, the, the water continued yeah. and then understanding after a while that it was a chosen place to just say this is the source do you just suddenly change the naming of a river. But I think it's a bit like, like streets, right? Sometimes the street changes name in the middle, sometimes it doesn't. But I think, oh, I'm just thinking of the Yellow River in, in China, which has a distinct yellow uh, flavor, a no, distinct yellow color. Right? And it might be that, I mean, it pick, picks it up somewhere, because there is a yellow sediment or something. So maybe it changed name to the Yellow River when it becomes yellow. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But that would be a reason for it to change the name, right? Or it could be like different people refer to it in different ways. Or oh, There's a hundred different... But it's, you said source. Yes, but, it's... but I feel like you would kind of expect it, to, and in a lot of times, yeah. uh, to be the, the, the full length of the river when you talk about it. And especially when I started to read about the Danube, yeah. it talked about the importance of the Danube for transportation and being able to move along it all through Europe in the way you can, and then, then it kind of implies that it's all the way you can go. On well, because it's, it's funny, because you say, like, you, you were these two tributaries that joined together yes. and became the Danube, but and you're also talking about a source, but from we know about watersheds and water basins, the, there is no real source. The water comes from yeah. everywhere and joins together in a huge Yeah, and stream. I think when they mean source, they, they more mean the general area where in the mountains where it starts. So 
So, um, then tell me, rivers, are they interesting? <laughs> I think rivers are interesting, yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I haven't really thought <laughs> about the subject for a long, long time. I mean, the water cycle is something I was taught in school, and to some, I guess, to some degree, I thought it was interesting then too. Right? There's so many factors that that comes into this, like the fact that ice floats, and I mean, these are not primary factors of rivers, but they're also very important for life. And yeah, and and you mentioned also these kind of exotic, weird rivers that are very short and actually oh, yeah. don't have mountains at the end. But yeah. They were to bodies of water connected and tidal forces causing the water to flow between them. Yeah, exactly. The tide would just... Uh, so, if I remember correctly, I think it was a Tom Scott video on YouTube. Anyway, if I remember correctly, it's like the world's shortest river, but I guess there's a few contenders, but one, one very short one in Norway, I think, and two lakes. And then the tide just sloshed the water between the lakes. So for half the day, the river went in one direction. The river then was maybe five or ten meters long, so but a but a huge river, like a huge amount of water going through. And then just for half the day, it sloshes in one direction, and the other half of the day, it sloshes in the other direction. And it's it's sort of like, what exactly is a river? How do you define a river? Is that yeah. actually a river? <laughs> because you know. <laughs> You can transport stuff there, I guess, but yeah. it's like... And, and I noticed, like, uh, in Swedish, yeah. like, there is the river, Flod, yeah. but there's also Elv, that I learned was actually a river in Sweden. And there's also an Å, but it's it's interesting because, you know, uh, many cities end in Å in Swedish. Yeah. And uh, almost uh, most of the, the river names I can come up with end with just Å, like Fyris Ån, which means the river... Tyrus. So it's 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 the most used word for river, I think, in Swedish. I guess <laughs> we have like a, a half a dozen different words for the word river, but we don't use the word river all that much anyway. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't say flood. But I was also Amazon flood, and you you could talk about flood, but that's not something we have in Sweden. It's yes. like that's rivers abroad. For the first time in my life, I feel I have a favorite river, the Danube. And I'm, I feel like very enthused about the Danube, but I really want to go. I want to see the Danube. I want to go on the Danube. I want to kayak from like Germany to the Black Sea, but that I don't think I should do. But, but you didn't make a comparison study out of a hundred different rivers and you're like, oh, Danube, that's clearly the best one. No, so that's, to be fair, I don't know that Danube is the best river. <laughs> to be fair, you haven't been fair. I did also kind of trace uh, the Yangtze. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's also well, also a cool river. So probably all rivers are kind of cool <laughs> if you explore them. I think, like, so when I went moved to Umeå for that one semester a long time ago, I was, one of the things that struck me the most, like the obvious difference difference between Uppsala and and Umeå is like there is the river Fyris, right? But it's a tiny little thing, and most of the time, especially in the summer, it's like it doesn't look deeper than you could just wade across it if it wasn't for this. But when you go to to Ume, the river is so fucking huge, and it's just this enormous amount of water. It's like you can stand on one shore and look over to the other, and maybe it's like 300 meters or so. And if I were to swim in that water, I would be just, I would just go with the river. I would never reach the other shore, even though it's so huge. And it's like the river Pires is like stationary most parts of it. Yeah, and it's that, tiny. That was the thing I thought about. Rivers have to flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so Umeå has an elv. Ume elv. So it's a big river. And Uppsala has Fyris Åm. And if you go to Stockholm, there's a whole bunch of water everywhere, but that's not but a no river rivers. because it, there, it's, the city is it's a city on islands, right? Yes. So it's the sea, or a bay of the sea. And so the, all the water is stationary. So seeing the water in Umeå, I think, was the most... Seeing the water. <laughs> I mean, the water in Umeå, the, the thing that impressed me, was it looked like Stockholm, only the river, the water was moving. So do you have a favorite river? Do I have a favorite river? I don't... I think I do. Oh, oh, oh uh, I, uh, the one portrayed by Summer Glau, I guess. <laughs> I, we had to have both a river and a river joke here somewhere. Yeah, you had to have that. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, you have been studiously avoiding them. Yes. Uh, 
No, I think I, if I did, it would probably be some extraterrestrial phenomenon, right? So, rivers. And rivers. No rivers. <laughs> Only rivers. Only rivers. Boop, boop. Hooray for the Danube. <laughs> Danube. Danube. Dono. Dono. Yeah, also that. I learned that Dono is called Danube. They're the same thing or the two different things? No, they're the same. So... Oh, yeah. I don't know, yeah. is what, I guess, what we say in Sweden and what they say in Germany. Okay. 